Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 15th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide you guys with another update on Florence, which at present is still maintaining tropical cy cyclone intensity, tropical storm intensity, more than one day after making landfall about 30 hours ago at Wilmington, North Carolina. That's an extraordinarily long period of time for a tropical cyclone to mean tropical storm intensity after making landfall as a category one hurricane. It's now a tropical storm at about minimum tropical storm strength with maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. And it is moving very slow to the west according to the most recent National Hurricane Center update at about two miles per hour, which is, which is a walking pace. As a result, the primary threat from this storm at this time is extraordinarily heavy rainfall. And already we are getting some reports of, of record amounts of rainfall for the North Carolina region with another up to 15 inches expected for some locations. So a very serious event that is now ongoing. Unfortunately, we are getting reports that some people have lost their lives as a result of this storm the, with the toll at this point at, at five individuals. But the damage to property and homes that have now been flooded and inundated as a result of a combination of storm surge and, and record rainfall is likely to be quite high and climbing higher over the coming days as numerous rivers reach flood stage or higher, possibly hitting record levels as that record, those record rainfall totals funnel into North Carolina and South Carolina streams and rivers. So our, our hearts and our thoughts and our wishes go out to the people of North Carolina and South Carolina who are now enduring what is a, a worst in case, a, a, what, is, what, what some are calling a one in 1,000 year rain event as a result of this very slow moving, heavily moisture laden tropical cyclone whose intensity has been spiked by human caused climate change. And as we noted in some previous blogs, this intensity change due to human caused climate change has already received some official scientific attribution studies and we're likely to see an, a number of additional studies. But I'd just like to say that, that people right now are saying that, you know, well, if, if we don't respond, we're going to see worse storms. Well, that, that is true. If, if we don't stop dumping carbon into the atmosphere and, and halt fossil fuel burning and, and its related carbon emission, then storms like these will continue to get worse. But what has already happened is that, that we are seeing worse storms already as a result of, of the carbon that has been dumped into the atmosphere over the past century and a half or more due primarily to fossil fuel burning, but, but also to other activities, including land, including land use, that has helped to increase the atmospheric carbon levels to such a degree now that there's, there's quite a bit of additional fuel for storms. We can certainly blunt the, the oncoming danger of, of severe weather due to human-caused climate change, and, and, and we should work to do that, but we should also be aware that storms now are more intense because of what has already happened. And so, so we also need to be more prepared as, as well as work to mitigate future damages by reducing carbon emissions. So I'm, I'm gonna go through Florence a bit with some of the latest data. Uh, this satellite shot shows the broad circulation of Florence over the U.S. East with the cloud coverage probably about 350 to 400 miles across in this representation, so a very massive storm. If you're in anywhere from D.C. to the to Savannah, Georgia, you can look up in the sky and, and see the, the circulation of Florence swirling overhead. 
the rain structure is, is, is more compact, but still quite widespread with very heavy bands cycling in over southeastern North Carolina and all the way across 95. We've, we've, seen, we've heard reports of, of 95 being blocked off near Fayetteville due to flooding. So, so the north-south traffic 495, unfortunately, as of this morning, according to reports, has been flooded out. Um, we've also seen heard numerous reports of, of flooded roads and, and flooded homes all throughout this region, which is, is now receiving record rainfall. The center of Florence over, over eastern South Carolina at this time is, is spinning very, very slowly to the west. So hour after hour of, of extreme rainfall is on the way for areas that are already getting hit by heavy rain. Now, looking at the National Weather Service precipitation totals for the past seven days, I'm just going to go ahead and reload this image. It seems to have just updated for it. Okay, well, just, I'm going to show you the 24-hour period and show you regions that have received over 10 inches of rain in the last 24 hours, which, which are very broad regions of North and now looks like parts of South Carolina. But... Switching to the seven day time frame, we see now a large swath of 20 inch plus rainfall amounts in southeastern North Carolina and parts of extreme, looks like parts of extreme northern South Carolina. So, so very heavy rainfall associated with Florence. And I'm just going to talk a little bit more about that. A recent report from Swansboro, North Carolina has has noted a 30.58 inch amount thus far for Florence and this breaks the all-time record for rainfall generated by a tropical cyclone which was 24.06 inches during Hurricane Floyd which which produced major flooding problems for North Carolina so so already some records being shattered in North Carolina as a result of of this storm. Now, it's worth noting that totals for this storm may approach 40 inches or more, according to some of the models. So, so even this total here is preliminary, and, and we're going to see severe rains over North and South Carolina over at least the next 24 hours, and possibly even longer. So day after day after day of rains, cycling in through this slow moving tropical cyclone. Uh, another summary put out by the National Weather Service shows present rainfall to well present rainfall and wind gust totals with uh, that 30 inch maximum near Swansboro and as you can see a, a large swath cutting in through southeastern North Carolina, just north of Wilmington, south of Moorhead City, with rainfall totals exceeding what, what appears to be 28 inches over, over a very wide area in this estimate. So, so extraordinary rainfall due to the slow-moving, highly moisture-dense Florence. And i just like to talk about one other climate change related factor that that may also be contributing to Florence's slow motion and that is impacts to the jet stream due to human caused climate change we ha according to recent research we have seen a much wavier jet stream pattern for many periods during northern hemisphere summer and the jet stream backing off to the north here in a high amplitude ridge over the past few days has, has provided almost very little in the way of steering currents for Florence, allowing Florence to stall over land for a very long period of time. We saw a similar fixed jet stream pattern in association with Harvey, and I'm, I'm curious as to what the climate scientists will say with regards to fingerprints for human-caused climate change as it results to jet stream patterns and, and Florence's stall and, and long duration rainfall event over the U.S. East Coast. It's, it's worth noting also that, that 
high atmospheric moisture loading over the U.S. East has been a continuous feature for this summer as sea surfaces around the East Coast have been much warmer than normal, bleeding out a lot.